I am here to deliver the speech of Dr. Hage Gottfried Geingo, President of the Republic of Namibia. I am doing it on his behalf. He is the one opening this meeting. So don't give me credit that don't belong to me. So having done that, I have to clear the air. Right Honorable Sarah Bugongewa Mabira, Prime Minister of the Republic of Namibia. Honorable Netumbo Nandi Taitua, Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of International Relations and Cooperation. Minister of Education, Anna Esther Mikodoka, my former Director of Education in Oshana, or was it Oshikoto? Uh, in those days, Samet Skienkamp was the director of education in Ohangwena region. That's why when I was in the north. <laughs> <laughs> All honorable ministers here present, my friend, the governors of the region, including Laura McCrowd Kachirwa, who used to be my deputy secretary general of the Zorko Party. I am well connected. That's why I'm a vice president. <laughs> <laughs> Members of the diplomatic corps, Mr. Sen Bang, UN resident coordinator, all Regional governors here present, as I said already. <coughs> Educational development partners present. All traditional leaders, public and private sector representatives, all invited guests, and those who have joined us virtually, locally and internationally, members of the media, ladies and gentlemen. And if there are other, he other former ministers of education here, please raise your hands. There is one there. Yeah, at least it's Dr. Namandi is there. The successor to the successor of me. Yeah, Johannes. <laughs> Johannes Mutorwa is there. So we are many. So, but the biggest educator and the most senior educator in the Republic of Namibia is our president who have trained not only the teachers, teachers, magistrates, lawyers, politicians, and still leading us. I have the honor, therefore, to read this statement, not my statement. Good, yeah, good morning, everybody. The statement reads as follows. It is my distinct honor to be part of this historic and auspicious event, the National Conference on Education, aimed at reviewing and realigning our education system to ensure that it is relevant and demand-driven to the needs of our country. It has been over 10 years since we hosted the first ever National Conference on Education under the leadership of the late Dr. Abraham Yambo. May his soul continue to rest in eternal peace. <laughs> Director of Ceremonies, the right to education is enshrined in the Namibian Constitution, which states, and I quote, all persons shall have the right to education, end of quote. And the importance of art and culture is encapsulated in Article 19 and 21 of our Constitution. In this same vein, Vision 2030 makes provision for Namibia to become a knowledge-based economy through the implementation of national development plans. Yes. The Namibian government has always been committed to provide accessible, equitable, 
and inclusive quality education for, for a tolerant, skilled, productive, and competitive nation for the prosperity of our nation. In respect of the national legislation, legislative and policy frameworks in education, Namibia is signatory to various United Nations conventions and global commitments on education, such as the Agenda for Sustainable Development and its related Sustainable Development Goals, and the Continental Education Strategy for Africa, CESA, 2016-2025. Ladies and gentlemen, dear participants, this National Conference on Education is yet another opportunity to deliberate on the state of education in Namibia, to reflect on the impact that COVID-19 had on education and identify key levers of change to transform our education system in the short, medium and long term. The conference will build on the regional and national consultative processes held in May and June this year, as well as retrospection of the commitment made in the 2011 National Conference on Education and assess targets achieved and those that remain unattained. I am informed that the national consultations on the Conference on Education have unearthed some key levers on how we could transform education in a Namibian context. We thus aim to have an education system that is solution-based, relevant, and is able to address the challenges faced in the modern world. I therefore call upon all participants at this conference to put their heads together and come up with workable and solution-based outcomes that will transform the education system in Namibia. The sustainable financing of education is the engine that drives quality education transformation. Thus, the Namibian government has over the years provided sufficient domestic resources through its national budget to the education sector. The aim is to meaningfully invest in this sector, which has the potential to transform society for the better. However, government alone cannot sufficiently finance the education sector, too broad, too big, too large. In order to bridge the education financing gap, it is imperative that the private sector support education through the collaborative development of national framework on corporate social responsibility. Financial accountability and management should be reinforced at all levels of education sector to ensure efficient utilization of these resources. Having achieved high levels of, levels of success in order to ensure quality education, a framework for parental and community resource mobilization should be developed. Ladies and gentlemen, we can see that during the period of 1991 to 2015, reduced poverty levels were recorded from 24.7% in 2009 to 2010 to 17% in 2015 to 20. As for the year 2016, Namibia fell into recession like the rest of the world.
following stagnation in trade and in the industry. And since then, we have struggled to recover. As we were faced with extreme drought in 2019, 20, 2018, 2019, prior to the impact of COVID-19, and now the impact of the foreign war in Ukraine. Education plays a large role in human capital index assessment, both in terms of enrollment and retention in school, in addition to early grade literacy and numeracy. Director for ceremony, good quality universal education is critical for the development of a nation. It is a great equalizer because it opens doors and creates opportunities never thought possible. Through the Millennium Development Goals, early this century, the UN helped us focus on education for all, also called EFA. This has about getting, this was about getting all children in school, about access to school for every child. The net enrollment rate in 2010 stood at 96.9 percent at junior primary and 49.8 percent at senior secondary, while in 2015 this reached 100 percent and 61.1 percent respectively. That is a quite a move. We have been working together towards the SDGs since 2015, especially with the emphasis to strengthen technical vocational training across all sectors. The SDGs now talk more to life, long access to education, and to quality of education for all learners, irrespective of their background, in line with what we have set out for ourselves in the HPP2 or leaving no one behind, leaving no child behind, leaving no citizen behind, and hopefully leaving no teacher behind. Dear participants, the African Union's Agenda 2063 commits us all of this beautiful continent to ensure that we have well-educated citizens and a skilled and, a, and skills revolution underpinned by science technology and innovation. This skills revolution must be built on a strong foundation of literacy and numeracy. Current research in education has confirmed that once children can read fluently and solve mathematical problems, they can learn skills from senior primary onwards skill which build competency that result in service delivery or production, which could also lead to entrepreneurial activity and ultimately develop into self-employment and employment creation, employment creation for themselves and for others. However, we must not pursue these skills at the expense of the abilities which underpin the essentials of being a citizen in a democratic country and which are needed for our youth to be able to adapt to changes in technology and work environments. These include the skills of critical thinking and reasoning, creative thinking and innovation, ability to, to solve problems, and the ability to work 
in a team and communicate effectively. In not so many words, our youth must be global citizens. UNESCO summarizes beautifully what our youth need. In their four pillars of education, and I quote, learning to know, learning to do, learning to live, and learning to be, end of quote. Director of Ceremonies, dear participants, I would like to use this opportunity to thank the Ministry of Education, Arts and Culture in collaboration with the Ministry of Higher Education, Technology and Innovation and with the support of our development partners including in particular UNICEF for having organized the 2022 National Conference on Education. Even with educational challenges brought about by COVID-19, our government, through the Ministry of Education, Arts and Culture, ensured that education continued and we remained resilient no matter the circumstances. Therefore, as a nation, our efforts should be geared towards having systems and mechanisms in place to be better prepared in the eventuality of other disruptive and catastrophic events. In conclusion, I wish you well in your endeavors this week as you systematically and collaboratively work towards transforming our education system. Let us own our education system and let us not be shy of taking risks our deliberation should be rigorous for the sake of the benefit of the Namibian child and the nation at large, because transformation means breaking barriers and taking people out of their comfort zones. Therefore, my clarion call to you is be open to new ideas Take criticism positively and ultimately celebrate change. I have the honor on behalf of His Excellency Dr. Gainkov to declare your conference officially open and I thank you.